Yes, my people, welcome back to the Liquidator podcast. If you didn't know, where have you been? But on Saturday night, Tommy Fury defeated KSI through what was originally a majority decision victory. Since then, they've retallied the scorecard and realized that the judge that had it as a draw didn't actually have it as a draw and they just added up their card wrong. It's now a unanimous decision. And I think that speaks to the unprofessionalism of the PBA, but that's for another time. I want to talk about this because the world's been talking about it. Social media's been going crazy. And there's a very high percentage of people online and in real life that believe that KSI actually won this fight. And I'm quoting a lot of people. They say it was a robbery. KSI himself said straight after the fight that it was a robbery. And I'm going to break down for you guys today why that is not the case. Fundamentally, this is not a robbery. Now, was it a close fight? Yes, it was a close fight. And it's pretty much as close as a boxing match can get. But it was not a robbery. Before I get into it, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I did a poll on the community page where there was people on opposite opposition sides, people saying that it was a robbery, some saying it's not. But I 100% truly believe that this was not a robbery. And I also do think that Tommy Fury did just about enough to win the fight. However, if it was a draw, I would not have been surprised. I've got three key reasons, three key reasons. Now, the first one is exactly what I have just mentioned. And that is the fact that it was such a close fight. And I think people need to reevaluate what they consider a robbery. Of course, there's a lot of kids, there's a lot of people that are new to the sport of boxing watching this fight. And I don't think they really understand what a robbery truly is. Now, if you watch the co-main event of the Canelo Alvarez versus Jamel Charlo fight, where I forget his name now, but the guy won 10 rounds, 10 rounds out of 12, and he ended up losing the fight. That is a robbery. In a situation, and I can go through the stats in just a moment, the CompuBox stats, in a situation where there's very marginal, uh, marginal gains in terms of who's outlanding who in each of the rounds, in a fight where there wasn't a lot of good exchanges, there wasn't a lot of clean shots landed, it is very, very difficult for me to say, no matter what the result was, whether it was KSI win, whether it was draw, whether it was Tommy win, that this was a robbery. Now, I am going to read out those stats because I think it will contextualize what I'm saying. So first round, KSI outlanded Fury by 11 punches to 7. Second round, KSI outlanded Fury by seven punches to four landed. Now, let's add the extra context that there was a point deduction for Tommy Fury in that round. Third round, Fury outlanded KSI by eight to five. Fourth, seven to three to Fury. Fifth, seven to eight to the way of KSI. And then the final round was six to four, the way of Fury. So if you were scoring the fight on purely punches alone, purely who's outlanding who, then yes, you might have scored it as a KSI win. You might have scored it as a KSI, uh, as a draw between the fighters. However, this is the stance that the people that don't watch boxing are taking. And fights aren't just scored on punches landed. We know that. Fights and the judges take into consideration who's putting on the pressure, who's being the aggressor in the fight. Is there any anything that a fighter's doing within the rounds that they feel is a survival tactic, i.e. clinching? That will be my second point. But all in all, to round up my first point, the fight was so close, and I think those punch stats exemplify that. The fight was so close that no matter what the result was, this fundamentally cannot be a robbery. It cannot be a robbery. A robbery is where a fighter clearly wins the fight and it doesn't go their way. And in this situation and in this fight, that did not happen. Now, I get why KSI fans are angry because he did put up a good fight and he surprised a lot of people. But unfortunately, he did not do enough to get the win. And that's the long and short of it. Let me know your thoughts on that one. My second comment, and I, I just touched on it a moment there, KSI's clinching. Now, for years gone by, we know judges do not take kindly to excessive clinching. And by the way, I want to overlay this because although Tommy Fury was deducted a point in round two, 
The referee did not once warn KSI for its excessive clinching. And some people are going to comment, I know they're going to say this, that, oh, it was both of them. Both of them were clinching. KSI, nine, 99 times out of 100, was initiating the clinch. And it was his tactic. His tactic was this. A short, sharp jab, overhand right, jump into the clinch so you can't get countered. There is a video recording as well online that shows his corner man saying that to him. Throw the overhand right, initiate the clinch, try and outland your opponent. However, if you're consistently and persistently clinching throughout the fight, the judges will not give you that round. Because KSI was also not landing clean shots. If he was landing clean shots and he was clinching, then fair enough. But he wasn't landing clean shots and he was initiating the clinch far too frequently. One, I'm surprised the referee didn't step in and warn him for that at the very least. I've actually seen point deductions for excessive clinching. But then two, I'm not surprised the judges, most of the judges anyway, scored the last four rounds to KSI. I know the fifth round, there was one judge that scored, uh, sorry, scored it to Tommy Fury. I know in the fifth round, there was a round that was scored to KSI um, by one of the judges. But look, the clinching was far too frequent. It wasn't a good game plan for KSI because it made him look amateurish. It made him look like the novice we know him to be. And it shone better on Tommy, who was the one actually trying to come forward, trying to put combinations together and be the aggressor. And I factored that into my scorecard. And if you guys don't know already, if you didn't tune in on Saturday night, I scored the first two rounds for KSI, so a 10-9 and a 10-8. And I had all of the last four rounds going to Tommy Fury, 10-9. So I had him winning by a point, 57-56, same as all three judges. Two in my own horn here. So that's it. KSI was clinching far too often. So you've got one, it was a close fight, which fundamentally means it's not a robbery. Two, KSI was clinching far too frequently. The judges would have frowned upon that. And I'm not surprised most of them gave Tommy the last four rounds. And then finally, three, Tommy was landing the cleaner shots. Now, I think it's very, yeah, I did just look at a list I wrote on Microsoft Word prior to this video. But... Tommy was actually landing the cleaner shots. Now, I don't want to look at the CompuBox stats in too much detail because I think if you actually broke it down and you look at clean, pure boxing shots landed, Tommy significantly was doing better work in there than KSI. How many times during that fight did KSI throw an overhand which didn't land clean, kind of grazed the chin of Tommy or kind of landed on the arm and the neck area? The crowd went crazy and everyone watching at home, all KSI fans and people that wanted him to win, were, going, were thinking he was landing those shots cleanly. There were moments in that fight where that happened. KSI threw an overhand. It didn't land. Commentators were singing his praises. And all the, all the while, Tommy's actually landed a counter right hand that no one was speaking about. I sometimes like to watch the fights back on mute, and I did that a couple of days ago, and my opinion didn't change. Tommy was landed the cleaning shots. He was countering KSI's overhand. Um, whilst this was a close fight, it was a very scrappy fight, and it was almost very difficult to score at times, I think at worst, you could have given this a draw, and at the very best, which what we saw, Tommy won the fight. Now, in a fight this close, if KSI were to win it on the scorecards, I would have held my hands up and said, fair enough. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, he took him the rounds, he made it a close fight, he made it a dog fight, and he got the win. And I think KSI fans and people that think he's won need to take a kind of leaf out of that book because we all know he did well. We all know that he put everything on the line and he tried to make things difficult for Tommy and he did make things difficult for Tommy. But ultimately, he didn't really do enough to win the fight convincingly. And, and I think if everyone looks at this in, a, in an objective way, Tommy, yes, unanimous decision may be slightly excessive, but ultimately it is not a robbery. And the fact that KSI and his team are talking about appealing this decision, I personally find embarrassing. I personally think when your opponent wins by a single point, if you're thinking about appealing, then I don't know what you're talking about. I, I think it's nonsense. I think it's nonsensical. Um, and I think if the PBA were to overturn this decision and give it to KSI, then I would lack severe trust, even more than I already do, because I drew, do not trust this PBA commission, whoever the bloody hell they are. I would lose all faith with them because they're, it, it's not a robbery. It's not a robbery. I mean, look, I could be wrong. These are my thoughts. I think 
Tommy was the one being the aggressor. He was the one trying to actually box. KSI, a lot of clinching, a lot of overhands, which people think landed clean that actually didn't. And ultimately, it was a close fight. Let me know in the comments below, do you guys think this was a robbery? Of course, it ended up being a unanimous decision victory for Tommy Fury, which I agree with. I did the scorecard on the night and I agreed. But let me know in the comments below, do you agree? Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe and peace. Goodbye.